thanks for choosing to watch the video. It again is our Perch Masters and it's our second episode in the series. And I feel ever so privileged to be following this guy. We've got an absolute corker for you. It's Mark Austin. Now to say Mark is a, an exceptional perch fisherman uh, would be doing a massive disservice to Mark, to be fair, because he catches amazing fish of all sorts of species. When I asked him to send through some pictures of some perch, sure enough, absolutely amazing fish came through, topped off by an absolute tank of four pound 12 ounces. What a fish, that is absolutely incredible. So it's late December, we're gonna join him on the river and without any pleasantries at all, I'm diving straight into his lure box because we're gonna get to the bottom of exactly how he's catching all these monster perch. Right, Mark, let's have a look. Right, first thing I notice is you've got two rods. Yeah. Uh, I know you normally take out one, so that's different. I sometimes take out two, but well, why, why are you bringing out two rods? What's that all about? So, two rods. Uh, I like fishing two rods because you can easily chop and change yeah. between the setups without having to re-rig and yeah. get lures out of the bag. So, generally, I'll have one setup on a shad yeah. uh, on a sort of open jig head. Right, okay. Um, let's know if you can see that there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I'll have one on that, use, using as uh, more of a search bait. Yep. And then the other on more of a finesse technique. So yeah. either a Ned Rig worm yeah. or a creature bait on a Cheb head. Yeah. Um, so I've got them two different styles there. Right. And cool. it's just easy to um, swap and change between them. Yeah. And what are they? Let's, what rods are they there? So these are um, two to eight gram yep. lightweight carbon rods. About perfect. six foot. Six foot. Perfect for perch fishing. Yeah. Uh, matched with a thousand size reel right loaded with 15 pound braid yeah and a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader great all right and then just a little clip and as you say on one yeah. you've both have got open jig heads do you prefer open jig heads for uh, me over chair bricks or anything like that if i'm fishing a water i know that's clear of snags yeah. then i'll always fish an open jig head yeah Okay. But if it is snaggy, then yeah, obviously I'll fish weedless. You just find your hookup rates are a bit better, right? Yeah, I've yeah. lost quite a few big fish fishing weedless over the years. <laughs> right. Uh, and that always haunts you a bit, doesn't it? So. Well, I guess if you, if you know the stretch, you know there aren't snags, there's not much weed there. Yeah, then there's white, no need white, for it. No need for it, yeah. All right, brilliant, okay. cool. So, um, let's have a quick look at in your lure box then, shall right, we? Have a, see, have a let's see what we got. So let's start with looking at what lures are you using today on the rods? So let's have a look. Today I'm using a eight centimetre shad, a really right. nice realistic looking bait there. Okay, and who's that made by um, and what size a, is it? That's a nine seven tungsten uh, ant shad, eight centimetres. Right, okay. And it's a nice colour, isn't it? Yeah. Like you say, very realistic. Almost two tone when you when you flick it around like yep. that. Okay. Um, that's just on a little five gram jig head. Right, okay. So nice and lightweight. Nice little red hook. What's that all about? Is that yeah. a thing? Yeah, it could be, yeah. A little bit of added attraction. <laughs> yeah, you never little know, flick do you? Of colour. What Ma about coloured jiggeds? Do you use those at all? Um, Not really. I see in, people use it. I don't. But uh, I have done in coloured water. Yeah. So a nice like neon okay. neon jig head in coloured water works quite well. Yeah, I see sharp people using little chartreuse ones yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, and, and, and on then, the other one. And then on the other got... setup, uh, I've got a, a Ned rigged floating worm. Yeah. Um, very very flexible soft a uh, lot of action on that yeah that's just on a little four gram tungsten um jig head good for sort of a bit of color in the water to create a bit of a sil silhouette yeah yeah and you're fishing that dead um, slow Ned yeah, dead slow yeah. uh yeah like i say a lovely little action on that one as well yeah a lot, of, mo lot of movement in there yeah, excellent job um, um let's have a look at some of the other ones that you've so, been using today i've seen you using this little yum yeah so i've been craw, using these little little mini uh crayfish lures Quite a natural colour, sort of like yeah. an orangey red, um, and then they're floating as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it can be net rigged or fished on a cheb rig. Yeah. Um, but as you can see, a very realistic little yeah yeah um, crayfish lure. Yeah, I like the colour of those. Um, so we've had we've had a couple of fish on them today, a couple of smaller fish. Yeah. Yeah, they've worked really well, haven't they? Definitely, um, definitely. Something I need to look into that. I think. But, yeah, I've had I've had some good fish on them. Brilliant. Um, do you have a lot of crayfish then in this river? Do you think it doesn't really matter whether you have or you uh, have? There are, there's a lot of crayfish in this stretch, so okay. All right. I can pick off some of the better fish. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant, mate. 
Excellent. Cool. Um, what about, are there any others that you want to uh, show us? Well, there's, there's loads in it. I know there's imagine. loads. But I mean, you had that funny little pack that you were going to show me just then. What's that yellow pack? Oh, here you go. These What's are quite that? interesting. So not something that you see. They look a bit funky. What are so they? So this is a little floating Unagi slug. Unagi John. slug from Lucky um, John. All right, if you fish Ned Rig yeah. or Cheb Rig, this, yeah. is a, this is a great little bait. Oh, so incredible looking. A lovely little action on that. Yeah, well. lovely. Nice little natural colour. Yeah, um, interesting. And a floating though. bait as well. So something a bit different as well that you don't see on all the Ned style lures. No, not so I've seen. As you can see, I'm barely moving that and it's wobbling. I can imagine that working really well when you've got a little bit of flow. Yeah, that works really well. You having to do very little and letting yeah. the flow just just work the lure for yeah. you. So we might give that a little go later as well. If mean. you if you had to choose one, if you had to if choose, to choose one, one, lure, would it be this one? That I would I would pick something like that, which is a, a Fox Rage Slick Shad. Okay. Nine centimeter, perfect size. Yeah. Quite a slim profile. He's slim. Um, yeah. Fishes well in in most conditions. Oh, right. I've had some really good fish on these over the years. Have you? Um, and are they buoyant or they don't? They no, just, they're not no, buoyant. They're not buoyant such, you can but... fish in weedless. Yeah. Um, on a on a small jig head, large jig head, uh, they do really well. Fantastic. Um, and yeah, I'd say that's one of my go-to lures. That's the one, is it? That's the one. Yeah. If you had to choose one, yeah. if we're all to run out to the shops and buy a lure. Yeah, that's the one we should be yeah, doing. I've had great success on that. Yeah. Fantastic, brilliant. Well, thank you, Mark. Thanks for showing us those. That anyway. is absolutely epic. Cheers. Frost, so yeah, there's been a few frosts. There's been some heavy rain recently, so the there's a nice bit of colour in the water. You said it's been really crystal clear. All um, the rivers have been clear, haven't they? Yeah, but yeah. the levels have dropped back down now, but the yeah. colour's still there. So it's looking prime. It's looking, it? it's looking good. Just got to wait for that bite time now. <laughs> yeah. It looks good on paper. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's up in the way, isn't it? It's, it's all about uh, locating the fish as well. It's, um, it's, yeah, which is sometimes quite hard to do on a Ned rig. Yes, I know. Yeah, that's why I like to alternate between the shad as well. Yeah. So you can cover a lot more water quick, isn't, quickly. isn't kind of known as a searching no. lure, but then yeah. sometimes if it's cold, that's just how they want it. So it's, yeah. you've got to fish slow, but still try and cover some water, I guess. Yeah. If, you, if you're just going in with the Ned. Yeah. But you're going to rotate anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when I'm fishing with a shad, I like to cast upstream to yeah. start with. Yeah. Just drag that through the flow a bit, let that swing round. I prefer upstream because I think when you when you're fishing sort of downstream, yeah, you haven't got the same amount of control on the lure, have you? Yeah. Sort of like the flow's trying to lift it up. Yeah. Whereas if you go upstream, especially if you're like Ned Rig fishing, for example, yeah. it's easier to go static. Yeah, because you can create a bit of a bow in the line then. Yeah, it feels like it to me. Hmm. I had more luck up that bridge than that. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way that. I mean, if you had some small ones up there, is there not a chance there are some big ones amongst them? Or never, not I've, really? I've never had a big one up there. Yeah, exactly. So you fish um, because they because there's not because it's a bit shallower as well. Yeah. They always tend to be in the deep water down here. I yeah. Find. So even though you had a couple of small ones up there before yeah. it turned up, you don't think it's worth it. Mm. No. No, I think. No. I think generally through through the colder months they're always down in the deep water. You want to um, you know, early on in the autumn they'll be up there definitely for yeah. sure in the shallower water. This is the thing, isn't it? If you sort of really get to know a river, you you clearly yeah. know the river really well around yeah. there. You're almost just waiting for that bite time. Yeah. You know what it's like at different yeah. times of year, at different times of day. Yeah. You know where you know, you've got an idea of where they're gonna be. Particularly the big ones. It's all about being in the right right place at the right time. Yeah. And you've obviously built a pretty good picture of the place over a yeah. period of time. Yeah, I don't... Some people just go out and they've got like two lures they fish with. How many do you... Do you have a fairly small collection though? Or do you, <laughs> to be honest. Or do you have a vast collection? Or do you... I've, I've probably got... Way too many. I've probably got about 50 different types in the bag, let's be honest. <laughs> How many of those will you actually use on the I'll probably, I might go through 10 of them. Will you? Yeah. All right, okay. It, it depends if they're feeding. If I start catching on one type, then I'll stick with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
There you go, first perch. Let's have a look, and there we go. Yeah. I won't get the big camera out, mainly because it's broken. <laughs> but there you go. What was that on? Uh, that was a little creature bait. Awesome, mate. Just down the edge. You said that's made by who? Yum Yum? Yum Baits. Oh, right, made up the Yum Yum bit. Pretty really yeah, realistic fantastic. little lure, that is. Yeah, look at that tiny little realistic. Cool. Brilliant. Well done, mate. Fantastic. Off the mark. We're off the mark. Gonna bag up now. Whereabouts was that? Right down the edge. Was it? Right down the edge. Sometimes reduce a bite. Yeah, it is quite a nice cover on the far bank now. Isn't it? Yeah. Had a few out of this spot, have you? Uh, I've had a few over the time, yeah. <laughs> You've probably had them out of most spots along there. Yeah, I'd like to say, yeah. you've, had, you've had fish out of most swims. you just got to find where they are just in the day. Them. There's, there's not a massive head of fish down there. No. But when you find them, they're generally a decent stamp. Yeah, you said as well, that they're all together. If you find one, you might find, yeah. you've got a good chance of finding the whole shoal. Definitely. So that's resulted in you having several multiple catches, I guess, is it? Yeah, I've had, I think, probably my most productive session I had seven perch over two pound at a one swim right so yeah if you do find them then you you really yeah. do find yeah them. what is it similar sort of size no so it's, a, it's much smaller oh is it what yeah. five centimeter uh, six, six centimeter yeah but it's a float a floating shad as well so what so who's it made by what is it uh it's a 97 tungsten okay a little uh, little shad uh so it's floating i'm going to fish it on the ned rig oh so okay it's got, so you... it's got the shad tail to give that action okay all right cool. um so it's been tough a bite so far so yeah moving over to a smaller bait um, and a darker color as well so fishing black because the water's still a bit colored Do you find that out scaling down sometimes yeah, yeah. If, if it's tough yeah I've noticed that you, yeah, you are changing sort of like lures. A reasonable amount. Yeah. It's not like until crazy, I start, but. Until I start getting some bites. Yeah. And work out what they want. Yeah. Sticking with quite dark lures at the moment. At the moment, yeah, there's still quite a bit of colour in the in the river. So why dark? Just to Just create that silhouette. Yeah. Bit of contrast, yeah. Isn't it? What about white lures? Do you go the other way or generally not? Uh, generally not. I'll fish bright yeah. colours, sort of neons, like oranges, well, yeah. chartreuse. Right, okay. So I don't do enough of it, I don't think. Tend to... Yeah. Sometimes go, they save the day. I tend to either go neutral or dark or light, yeah. and that's sort of it. You think I'm missing a trick? Should be trying the sort of bright chartreuse and the yeah. lemon tigers. I will I will try them a bit later will on you? if we haven't had any. Right. So you'll try everything else first and then yeah. you'll go on to those, will you? Yeah, I'll start on the dark colours first. Yeah. And you've had days of you where you suddenly put on something bright. Yeah, and, like all that, of a sudden, and it's just suddenly yeah, happened. Yeah. They surprise you. Yeah. I do find though fishing the, the bright colours, the pike do tend to home in on them. Right, okay. Uh, which I don't really want to catch the pike. No. Um, but they're quite blatant, aren't they? I they think are, the pike yeah. quite like blatant lures. So quickly tell us what you're putting on there because this is how i don't do an awful lot of really bright yeah so it's putting on a really bright color um big uh, bright yeah, shad 10 centimeter shad yeah um on a nine gram jig head right struggling to put it on there there we go yeah but interesting like i don't tend to do this does attract the pike a little bit this does sort of thing doesn't it yeah but in colored water that can make the difference sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've tried a few things now, haven't yeah. it? So, why not? Yeah, it's always worth a try. See what they want. What lure is it exactly? Do you know? Who's it made um, by? That's a Fox Rage. Is um, it? I think it's a uh, Pro Shad. Yeah. If you're like me, I don't always know the names. It's <laughs> yeah. hard, isn't it? Like, right, so many lures. You, you it's just a creature them. bait or it's yeah. just a bright shad. Don't bust my chops, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Fishing that a little bit faster, just waiting for it to hit the bottom each time. 
You put um, heavier jig head on. Why have you done jig that? Head. Um, there's a little bit of flow out the back to sort of uh, stay, stay connected to it. It's got a bit more control with it. A bit more control. Can cast it a little bit further as well. Yeah. Um, can cover a bit more water. Really bright tail, paddle tail, and that bright paddle tail yeah, really kicking. Yeah. We'll try a few different retrieves as well. So sometimes I'll just use let the reel do the work. A couple of reel turns. Yeah. Um, and other times I'll lift up the rod high. Right. A bit more of a sweeping motion. And then a bit more, more of a... rise and fall of the lure. Right. Uh, but I will try different retrieves. Won't just do the same one. No. And you'll keep switching it up yeah. you, all the time. Definitely. So with that, you're switching the style of retrieve. You're switching the lure size, you're switching the lure colour. Yeah, I'm trying everything. And I guess <laughs> you're changing the jig head weight as yeah. well, so that when you're doing those retrieve, you're getting a different type of drop. Yeah. Getting nice and close to those yeah. trees on the far bank, and yeah. you can imagine. Always, always try and hit that far bank. You can imagine can following, on, following it out. From yeah, the it could be fish like sitting right underneath that cover. Yeah. Um, often you, you can get a hit on the drop. Can you? Yeah, it'll be ready to strike. Yeah, it can catch by surprise a bit, like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Usual suspect. Yeah. Get crashed the party. Really thought that was the one, didn't we? It felt like a perch, but it was the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, that might mean that there are some bait fish here. Yep. I think we'll. we'll stay it always gives me a little bit of confidence. It's still. a bit, bit of hope, isn't there? I think we'll stay well, in this area for ten minutes. Yeah, you kind of think, well, if the pike are there, I might have found the bait fish. Definitely. If I found the bait fish, I might have found the perch. <laughs> Yeah. It's not big, but it's a fish. No, oh, it's a it's a micro pike. <laughs> Engulfed it as well. So yeah, so you're a bit like me. You fish for everything, don't you? Yeah. I do. um, what is it that you like about perch fishing? Um, I, I really like perch fishing because I like using light gear. I don't like fishing too heavy. Nah. Um, and then obviously with short sessions as well, they're a great fish that you can just go down with a rod and a bag. Yeah. And you, you can hook into a decent fish, and they're pretty impressive, aren't they? When they come oh, they're up. They're incredible, aren't they? Pretty astonishing. Yeah. Do you do that quite a lot in a lot of your fishing? I bet you do go light for a lot of your fishing. Do you yeah. do a lot of chub and barbel? Yeah, I generally, if I can go out with a rod and a bag and a chair and a net, that, that's me done. That's you? Yeah, I don't like to lug all the gear around. Were you, were you once a carp angler with all the gear? Uh, back in the day I was, yeah. Yeah, and you don't miss that? Not really, no. <laughs> no. I do still do it though, every do now you? and then. Yeah. But more of a social with friends. Really? Yeah. Yeah. But generally speaking, if you're fishing but whether it's chub, barbel, perch, or whatever, you're along yeah. stretches like this, are you? Yeah, just keeping mobile. Yeah. Just fishing fishing down the river. Yeah, moving about. Yeah. Short sessions. Right, Mark's got us in the cars. He's saying we need to move location. Uh, not unusual for me to do that, I guess, as well. You know, if you're not, not having the success that you want in one spot jump in the car go to a different stretch that's exactly what we're doing uh, he did have one fish one perch in fact he had a couple of little ones before i even turned up apparently and then he had a, a sort of senior wasp while i was there uh, but he's not getting what he's after and so he's wanting us to move and that's exactly what we're doing
So it's been a bit tricky so far today, hasn't it? Yeah. And you were saying you sort of like think it might be down to the high pressure. It's not yeah. something I really look at. Yeah, so today it's high pressure and yeah. we've really struggled for bites. Yeah. Um, normally I'd keep an eye out so if, if there's a spell of low pressure coming in. Right. Um, that is a key time to fish for perch because generally they're quite active. Right, okay. And I've always found I've had more bites and, and better fishing conditions when it's low pressure. When it's low pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it has been quite, it's been rock hard today. And you're it's been quite very tough. You're quite surprised how hard it's been today, I think, isn't it? It's, it's been very tough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and other than that pressure, it's looked bob on, yeah. isn't it? Conditions look great. Yeah. Water, Touch of colour. Yeah, it's nice about, and mild. It's about seven, eight degrees. Yeah. Um, but then you have no got wind. That, but then you have got that high but pressure. high pressure, and it, yeah. it really has made the difference today, I think. But yeah, no, def that, honestly, when yeah. I've had great sessions where I've been bagging up, yeah. low pressure. It is low pressure. 100% every time. Yeah. It's something in it. Yeah. So yeah. next week is there's low pressure coming in. So right. uh, there's a bit of rain coming and yeah, it looks looks like the conditions could be more favorable next week. Right, might be back then. Yeah, I think we might have to do that. <laughs>
Cheers. Just taking my time a bit. I don't wanna. Yeah. Update. That's what we came for. There we go. We did it. Well played, mate. That's fantastic. So we've had to switch venue, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. So River wasn't doing much, so no. come down to a little uh, local steel water, I know, and uh, the action was uh, pretty instant. Yeah, and you had a couple more as well, didn't you? Had a few more. Um, and then a nice one. Yeah, 39 centimetres, no monster, but still a decent fish. Yeah, no, blinded. And uh, looks good for maybe a number as well. Yeah, I feel We're good. losing the light, so we might not record it. But. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Cool, get I'm going to get it back. Yeah. Cheers. Brilliant, mate. So that's it, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please remember to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Absolutely awesome angling by Mark there. I think my main takeaways from that are, um, yeah, should introduce some more shads into my fishing probably, but then I knew that. Um, I think the other thing that came across there was the grind, the graft, the effort that these anglers are putting into catching these perch. Um, quite incredible. Uh, you know, we, we, we met very early in the day and he kept going, kept going, kept going and got exactly what he deserved in the end. Should I be taking two rods out on the bank? Yeah, maybe I should, maybe I should. Uh, means I can chop and change my lures much quicker. Uh, it was interesting to see him switching between his rods the way that he did. I was out with another angler who's going to be coming in a future Perch Masters episode. Sure enough, he was doing the same multiple rods, able to switch very quickly. Again, he was looking for bait fish. He was sort of controlling his lure really beautifully. But that's it. That's a wrap. Thanks again. Hope you all have an amazing Christmas and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.